point where you, you just have to almost walk away because they can't help themselves and how much heartbreak do you want to go through and how much money do you want to invest to them and just to have them throw it all away. Um, it definitely is harder the longer the kids have been in our program. Um, you know, this particular kid's been in our program about 10 years, so it makes it extremely hard to turn your back on. I can't say that I would ever turn my back on them, but I don't know that I would continue to go out of my way to, to help them. Sounds like he's just laying in bed. Court date, obviously they're going to issue a warrant for his arrest and just complicate things even more. Hinder a proles and resist an officer. That's the abbreviations the court uses for these types of charges. It's on so much room we can put on these notices. So that's what that is. It's hinder and pose. And you have actually in your hands the notice to appear. This is what we generate to give everyone that comes back for the next hearing today. Um, so yes, he's scheduled for a jury trial this morning. Doubt that'll happen, but we're gonna make sure that they'll be here to talk to the attorney. He was a great kid. He never got in trouble, but he just seems to sort of be dabbling in a little more serious things, uh, you know, as he gets older. You know, I think now he's been, you know, experimenting with marijuana and drinking and uh, hanging out with a little bit older kids, and so it's the, the things just are growing, taking baby steps into being worse uh, charges and worse offenses. Right. I know, but you know what that's in. No, I excuse that. It's me. What's that mean? Over the judge? You know they got your school records. Oh, she told me what time here. How many times you skip? I mean, what the situation is. I'm in a hard and they don't even leave me. Yeah, they just drag you down. Yeah, it's clean. What do they think? They think it's funny? You still talk to him? No, I don't talk to him. His mind is, if he could just explain himself to the judge, that the judge would just dismiss everything. He, he just has no concept of how the process works. But what ultimately happened is that they offered him the opportunity to do 40 hours of community service which as an authorized community service provider, he could do it here. And our thought was to have him work with tutors uh, in some way to complete some sort of 40 hours of school work of some sort. And then he would have to pay a fine of $300. And again, we were going to try and provide some sort of service maybe he could have done here, um, helping clean, where we could have contributed some money toward that. Um, but since agreeing to it and signing all the paperwork, He's just uh, disappeared. He doesn't want to come around. And... You're gonna have to do something for what happened. Yeah, we'll have her wait around a little while to see. You got arrested for what? Mm -hmm. Trespassing. That's it. Resisting arrest. Yeah, they were just asking questions like that, which is perfect. Leaving eyes. That's why. Huh? Leaving okay, eyes. Okay. Right. If you want to go in there and tell the judge okay. that the officer was being an ass, and you think. That that's gonna make this whole thing go away. You're, you're it's mo to it. It's mo to it. Did you have a way of articulating this story to the judge that you think will get this all dismissed? Really, no words can describe how that makes uh, a coach or a father or a parent feel. I mean, I I look at these kids like they're my kids, and when I see someone that has just so much potential, not only in life but in sports to just throw it all away and choose to drink and smoke and skip school and it just makes me sick and the kids want to get out of school so bad like they, they just say they want to be done with school they want to get done and and I just asked them like for what reason why what is your hurry to get out of school I mean you don't have like a, a two hundred thousand job dollar job waiting for you the day you graduate there, there's their mentality is just they just want to get out of school, but they don't have any thought beyond that. So I'm trying to slow them down and, and keep them in school and put some sort of plan together for them. But when I see them just throw it away, it's just it's heartbreaking. It's sick. It makes you sick, and it, you know you got to um, you just got to live with it and somehow move forward and help them best you can. 
if I step back and look at the type of kids that we're dealing with, they're a really kind of a niche group. Aside from the fact they are homeless to a degree, uh, you know, impoverished, underprivileged, the one aspect that we try to target are the young kids that are willing to kind of step outside of their environment to improve themselves. And that's really where we came up with the acronym Help a Willing Kid Foundation. And it's an opportunity for these kids to escape their life and make themselves better. The children that we work with, or that we target, is that other child, that sister, that brother, that because of their circumstances, rather than acting out in a misbehaving manner, they kind of become a recluse and they internalize it. And they walk around with their head down. And they don't talk out loud. They can't look somebody in the eye and speak to them. They're aware of their situation, but rather than act out in a behavior that could ultimately lead to some kind of trouble, they just sort of internalize it. And those are the kids that we are really attracting to what we do. And through the different programs that we do, we try to get them educational assistance. We provide tutoring for them every night of the week. We have a lot of programs for them to try and get them to communicate, be more aware of themselves, develop some self sense of self-worth and be able to go out and be ultimately become a positive contributor to society, which is our goal, is to get them over the hump. Boxing might be violent to some people, but boxing is very disciplined. Boxing is a way to help a young man control his anger and his temper. Because if you go into an angry mode or spell in the ring, you're going to get towed up. That young man that disciplined and focused, he's going to discipline you in the ring. And you're wondering why you're getting a busted nose, busted mouth, because you got out there and got wild acting stupid. So you're going to get towed up. To be able not to let that happen to you, you have to have some discipline about yourself. I'm angry. I'm upset. So when you catch angry kids and you teach them this, they become self-disciplined. If I get angry, I'm going to get tore up in this ring. I don't want that to happen. So the first thing, we tell them to take a deep breath. <gasps> let it out slow. Count to ten. And next thing you know, you're not that angry as you thought you were. And I said, because when you get out of control, you get tore up in the street. When you get out of control at home, mom and daddy get you. When you get out of control in school, you get suspended. So you don't want those things to happen. You got to control what you do. And how you control it? Take a deep breath, count to 10. Think about what you're about to do before you do it. When he graduates from high school, he'll have 14 college credits under his belt. He's a cadet at the Ingham County Sheriff's Program, a program that I took Eric Keese and 10 other kids to, and Tyrone was the only one that wanted to do it. Um, he has a part-time job at uh, Subway, and it's just um, a completely, their lives are completely different from one another. But they're all given the same opportunity. It's what they choose to take and what they choose to deny. I didn't start off in this club, actually. I started off when I was a little bit younger, when I was like 11, and, and it was due because I fought a lot. When we moved up here, uh, she already had another girl, so you know, it was three boys and two girls. Five kids, one mom, no job. She uh, depending on what you call it, what, uh, social security checks and all. You know, it's just survival of the fittest in the house. And then she had an addiction, you know, that doesn't click when you have that many kids and an addiction, you know. Drugs take part in anybody's life when they're not, you know, uh, active and doing stuff like po positive things, you know. So drugs, uh, uh, negative stuff, things, you know. So before we moved up here, she went to rehab, and then we came up here, she restarted everything over. Back to the drug using, no job, uh, more court stuff. I say about around the age of 15, 15, 16, uh, you know, um, that man basically saved my life. If you, if you, we can put it like that, you know, because uh, he like took me in, 
because my mom had kicked me out. You know? We have other kids that have been given the exact same opportunity, like Tyrone, who just took everything we offered to them. And if you looked at where they're at, they're both the exact same age. They were given the same opportunities at the same time. Well, first of all, like when my mom first kicked me out, he adopted me. So, you know, he immediately took me in because he, he seen the potential that I had. So, you know, I was behind on school real bad. When I got kicked out, I was suspended for the rest of the year. And ever since then, man, coming to the gym is like a second home, you know? It's like where you can like release energy, tension from any, coming from any kind of place, you know? And, and not just that, you can uh, excel in all, all, all the little possible things you, you choose to be in from here, you know? Academically, that's, that's first priority right there, your academics. All the education you can get, you gotta get it. And that's, that's what Coach is trying to uh, show to these kids. Boxing is fun, you know? Mm -hmm. not every, everybody's struggle is different. But this is, this is the place you can come release any kind of tension, you know? Being here is just, it's just, it can motivate you. And when I first started, you know, I was scared, you know, to open up to anybody. So the first person I talked to was the coach. You know, I didn't talk to any, either of the fighters for about a half a year of being here, you know, almost seven months. And then coach, uh, he told me like, man, you don't have to hide nothing here, you know. He makes this place open to any kid that pleases to come, you know. And like, that man, it's, it's, it's just countless things I done done that you would think he would have had the reaction from my mother. <laughs> I mean, it was just so crazy. He showed me that, because I, I wanted to give up. He showed me a platter if I wanted to graduate, which I wanted to do to make myself proud. I think I've spoken to him once um, since then. And if he doesn't comply, by the deadline, which is coming up in about 35 days, then the warrant will be reissued for his arrest and there will be no opportunity to accept that plea. They'll prosecute him to the fullest extent of the crime. When he first adopted me, because you know, I was in foster care before I left my mom, before she kicked me, I was in foster care twice. And I don't, I truthfully did not know the genuine feeling of love. You know, I, I, to me, it's still new. You know, I, I don't know, I, I can, I wouldn't know if my parents even loved me. He took me out of the lifestyle that I was in and put me in a lifestyle that I should have been in, you know. It's not fair for a kid to have to live the lifestyle that their parents lived, you know, because they, they, you want your kids to always be better than what you were, always. And, um, it's basically, you know, when, when he adopted me, is all, all the love I was getting from this man, it was, it was new. So, you know, I didn't know how to take it. And it was so, like, it was so real. And like me, I'm not a fan of crying because I feel like it was, it's, it was part of my ego and pride. But, you know, every time I, every time I wake up in the morning, I, I thank Jesus for this man, you know? It was like he sent them to me, and here I am now. And like being in this gym, I can, I can say was one of the first best and positive decisions I ever made. You know, because he, this gym, like academically, you know, I'm uh, doing good in high school. It's my senior year. Uh, I'm dual enrolled at uh, LCC, you know, I'm a 3.0 student. You know, and this, this is all from here, you know, it's tutoring. All the tutoring, all the, he basically, like I said, from a, a boy to a man, you know, he can give a kid a, a work ethic. Uh, he can also get kids scholarships, you know. All you, he can give you the desire to want more, you know. And it all, it, it, all you gotta do is just want the, the, the motivation to get it, you know. And he gives it to you. It, here's where it's, like, to me it's where it's at, you know. It's just, it's like being in the clouds. If I was Peter Pan, I'd flow in this room all day. <laughs>